In this video, you'll learn everything about the Fujifilm X-A5 camera. You'll see sample photos and video, learn about its features in detail, and see exactly how it works so you can decide if this is the right camera for you. Hey photographers! You'll be forgiven for stereotyping the Fujifilm X-A5 as a point-and-shoot camera. So prepare yourself for some surprises. The X-A5 is small, yet has an APS-C sensor for detailed, high-quality image. Its advanced auto modes are point-and-shoot easy, but all of the photography settings can be adjusted, bypassing the automation for full manual control of exposure, focus, and color without a lot of menu fiddling. Now, it's easy to underestimate this model, which includes an advanced range of powerful auto and interesting manual features. And as with every camera, it has a few quirks and a drawback or two. Now, this is a long video. Please use the menu in the description to navigate to the part that interests you. Now, this review is created with firmware 2.0. If you have not already upgraded, I recommend that you do, as there are several features I'll cover that are part of those updates. And let's start with the trivia question. In which year did Fujifilm launch their first X-Series camera? Answer at the end. Now, on Martin's checklist, the X-A5 has an APS-C sensor with a Bayer filter, interchangeable lenses using the Fujifilm X-mount, manual control of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. It can save RAW files, but it's missing a viewfinder, which is limiting, but not necessarily, a deal breaker. It's a mirrorless camera, which keeps it small, tipping the scale at 361 grams with battery and memory card. The 15 to 45 kit lens adds another 135 grams for a total just under 500. It's nice and light, making it perfect for walking around Washington on a hot summer day. The right side power switch is integrated with the shutter, making it possible to quickly power up and shoot from the handheld position. Grips in the front and back are small, but sufficient to get a firm hold. Also on the right, the mode dial to select the exposure mode and access the advanced auto features. And a multipurpose control dial, primarily used for exposure compensation. As well as a fun key, which can be customized for simple access to one of several functions. By default, it sets the ISO. The back thumb rest holds a second control dial assigned to aperture by default. On the back, the menu key is surrounded by four navigation keys, each of which has an assigned function, and four more selection keys. None of these can be customized. Now on the left side, a covered port for the 2.5mm mic in, and a switch to release the flash, with a guide number of four, which can be tilted back to bounce. There's also a flash shoe for optional external flash units, the right side port has connectors for USB and HDMI. The bottom port contains the battery and SD card. This is the standard 126S battery found on most Fujifilm cameras. SD UHS-1 type cards are supported. The tripod mount isn't centered under the lens and is a little too close to the battery door. The touchscreen LCD swivels down about 45 degrees and up 180. And then it extends up a little further, which flips the screen for viewing from the front. It's a 1000K dot TFT LCD type. Fujifilm supports two menu types. The XA5's is the more basic design. Before starting, I'm going to select the maximum image aspect, that's large 3x2 24 megapixels. Medium and small, as well as 16x9 and square aspects are available. My quality preference is Fine Plus RAW. JPEG only with two quality settings, as well as RAW only, can be selected. And for touch, while tap and snap shutter is supported, I prefer to use touch for autofocus. I prefer the mechanical shutter. From the setup screens, I'm turning the operation beep off, but leaving the shutter sounds on. There are three sounds to choose from. You'll hear those when you're using the electronic shutter. In the screen setup, I turn the image disp to 1.5 seconds so I can briefly see the image I've just taken. 
And then using display custom setting, I'm turning on the level, otherwise my pictures tend to lean to the right, and the histogram for exposure. Now note that this is a full-featured control to manage all of the icons and control that appear on the display screen. The setup contains an overriding touch setting, which completely disables the touch screen, so if it's not working, look here. And finally, I pair my phone using Bluetooth and the Fujifilm smartphone app to coordinate time and location information with the phone, and to enable images to send to the phone automatically for posting on social media. Now, in the next section, I'm going to go through the manual exposure and focus settings. If you're more interested in the easy and fun features of the XA5, use the menu in the description to skip ahead. And now that we're prepped, let's turn the mode dial to M and figure out the manual settings and controls. Now I'm starting here to demonstrate the flexibility that the XA5 has, but it also has a very powerful and interesting set of auto features, which we'll get to in a minute. The ISO setting in Auto by default should be set to any numerical setting, and change white balance from its Auto default to Daylight. Use Focus Mode to select Manual Focus, and you now have full control of all the camera's capabilities. Use the menu to select the Meter Mode. Fujifilm calls this Photometry. Three settings, Multi, Spot, and Average. I use Multi, which takes the composition of the scene into account. Average is a little less changeable. When using autofocus, the spot meter and focus spot are combined by default. And I should note that in autofocus, when face detect is on, the photometry settings are not available. The 15 to 45 lens extends when powered on. The larger ring is a powered zoom control. The display shows the approximate focal length from wide 15 to tight 45. And note that when the camera is powered off and then on again, the lens resumes to its previous zoom setting. Use the top dial to set the shutter speed. Larger numbers will freeze the action but let in less light. And the back dial to set the aperture. Smaller F numbers open the aperture for a shallow depth of field and blurred background for portraits. And let me digress for a minute to say that Fujifilm has many lenses, like this 14mm f2.8, that have an aperture ring, which is used instead of the dial. Press the Fun button to select the appropriate ISO, and once the ISO is in the right range, you can fine-tune the exposure using aperture and shutter while referencing the histogram you want it centered. The meter reading on the left side of the screen also provides exposure guidance using the photometry setting selected earlier. Now, with exposure set, we should check that the white balance setting is where we want. Press the right side of the menu controls. This is daylight, so that setting should be good. If it doesn't seem right, another preset like shade might be better, or let the camera decide using auto. White balance can also be customized across the red, green, and blue amber axis to fine tune and create a look for your creative needs. Press the Film icon screen right to access Fujifilm's film simulations, which recreate the looks of specific analog film stocks. So from Velvia and Astia to multiple black and white looks, these settings provide a range of color profiles to suit various image types. I use the bright colors of Velvia for landscapes and the softer classic chrome setting to give video a more cinematic look. To focus the image, use the focus ring on the lens. A distance ruler appears on screen to assist. Press down on the back dial and then turn it to select a magnification setting to fine tune your focus. A soft press on the shutter returns the screen to display the full scene. The 15 to 45 lens uses focus by wire. Now for full manual focus, the 14 mm f2.8 has a fully manual focus ring. Pull the ring back to disengage the clutch and set the distance. Press down on the rear dial to change the focus assist to focus peak highlight, which displays a white edge on focused objects. There's no option to set a different color or vary the intensity. And press the shutter to take the image. So by now you're thinking, wow, this camera really provides all the creative control I want. Or, wow, that's a lot of work. So let's go back and add the auto controls to simplify your life. 
After all, your most important job is composition and timing. And all the other details could be relegated to the camera's computing system. Or not. Your choice. If you didn't turn the auto white balance on before, might as well do that now. The only time I don't use it is when I'm shooting video. And then let's turn on the auto ISO. The XA5 has three settings so you can customize them and then select the one that suits each situation best. Manual ISO ranges from 200 to 12,800. Now I recommend that you take some images at the high settings and determine your level of tolerance for noise and mush. Then I set Auto 1 for regular use with a maximum of 800. For Auto 2 in darker situations I set a maximum of 3200. Then when I know it's a compromise but I want the photo anyway, Auto 3 to 6400. Not sure why 12.8 can be selected but when I want that I select it using the fun button. The advantage of using Auto ISO is that I still have the freedom to set the aperture and the shutter speed while the camera manages the overall exposure. The disadvantage is that the meter is in control. There's no way to make a change to the exposure level of the scene. But you could simplify further. If you just need to control the aperture, use the mode dial's A position and let the camera control the shutter speed. And this is actually my most used setting. Now the left side exposure display turns into the exposure compensation scale. Use the top dial to either lighten or darken the scene. Alternately, to set the shutter speed and let the camera control the aperture, use S. In both of these modes, it's the up-facing back dial that selects the setting. And then Program, which sets both aperture and shutter automatically. Now the XA5 is in full control of all the exposure settings, and you use the exposure compensation to manage the overall exposure. Oh, and let's switch to autofocus. Press the bottom right on-screen button to change to AFS Single. Then select a mode. Single provides a sizable movable point. Press the top of the menu control area to activate, turn the up-facing dial to size, and then the four directions around the menu to select the spot. The larger central spots use a hybrid phase and contrast detection system. The smaller outer spots only contrast. The phase detect points are faster and don't chase back and forth. The contrast points take slightly longer to focus. Zone has a selectable 3x3, 5x5 or 7x7 grid and wide tracking uses all the focus points both find the closest contrasty object. With single, a soft press focuses the subject and locks as long as the shutter remains soft pressed. Switching to continuous, the soft press position continues to focus even if the subject changes position. The wide tracking mode also follows the subject as it moves. Now of course all of this is secondary to face eye detection. When it's enabled, if the camera detects a face in the frame, faces get priority both for focus and for exposure, and eye detection can be enabled for greater focus precision. There are settings to let the camera choose the eye, or to prefer the right or the left. Now for general shooting, I use face eye auto, wide, and single. And these settings enable you to do everything you need with the XA5, but that's actually just the start of its feature set. It is, of course, also a video camera. Now, there is no explicit video mode. Press the red button to start recording, and that switches the aspect ratio to 16 by 9, which means you may need to recompose your shot slightly. You're seeing this as recorded on an external recorder where the effect is more pronounced than on the LCD. I'll do it again so that you can also see that there's a video-specific focus setting. When you start recording, the focus mode changes from the stills manual setting to the video mode's continuous setting. Touch does work for a rack focus while recording video, even with an external recorder connected. It's not as smooth as I'd like. And considering that Fujifilm is leading the video quality and capability race with their other models, the XA5 is slightly disappointing. On the movie settings menu, the mode selections start at 4K, but only at 15 frames per second. It's been more than a century since creators figured out the minimum for smooth motion is 24 frames. Not sure why the memo didn't get through to the XA5 team.
If you don't need 4K, the XA5 has HD at 60 and 24 frames, but not 30, which to me would seem to be the one standard that's most useful. All of these settings can record just under 30 minutes in a single clip. Video is saved in MOV files in 15 minute 4 GB chunks with a data rate just under 40 megabits. Now with its flip up forward facing screen and a mic input, although I do have to use an adapter, the XA5 has the basics of what it takes to be a good HD vlogging camera. And so that you can hear the onboard mic, I'm using it instead of plugging in an external mic. The 15 to 45 lens is set at its widest. The video is recording at 1080 60. I'm using shutter priority with a 1 60th shutter and auto ISO, which is a video specific menu selection. The focus mode is also video specific, and I'm using autofocus continuous mode with area on and the focus pointed at my chest. Now, although there's no specific setting, Face Eye Auto is on and works in video mode, uh, but as you're seeing, it's not entirely reliable with my facial features and glasses. Stabilization, IS mode, is set to continuous, and I've turned the LCD brightness up full so that I can see the screen. Now, for video, I prefer the classic Chrome Film Sim, and as it's bright out today, I minimize the contrast by turning highlight and shadow down a few clicks each. Now, because it's not enough to be able to just see myself as a shoot, I need to be confident that the shot remains relatively stable, that I'm in focus, and that exposure changes aren't too abrupt as I make my way down the path. Now, if all of that was pretty serious stuff, the rest makes this camera easy and fun. There are four modes on the dial with pictograms. And as soon as you leave the PASM modes, the camera automatically turns off the ability to save RAW files. There is a Portrait Enhancer mode. Press the button on the right side of the screen to access five settings of enhancement for smoother skin. This setting turns on Face Eye Detect even if it's off in the menu. A Landscape mode for scenic and architecture shots. A Sports mode for action. Now, I thought that landscape would use a smaller aperture and sports would use a faster shutter speed. They seem to be about the same. Now, I also hoped that the sports mode would switch to autofocus continuous and activate burst mode, but neither. The fourth position is an enhanced night mode. The next dial setting is panorama. There are two angles. M creates a 9 megapixel that has a 4x1 aspect. L is 14 megapixels with 6x1. However, if you rotate the camera sideways, L is 20 megapixels with a 4x1 aspect, so if you're shooting panoramas, go sideways. Now going back, the mode dial has an SP position. Use the on-screen button to scroll through and select additional scene modes, as well as a multi-exposure mode. After you've taken the first image and approved it, the camera superimposes a second image. Although interesting, you might prefer to do this kind of thing in Photoshop where you'll have more control as well as the flexibility to try multiple options. The advanced setting, again, press the on-screen button to select and scroll through the options. It offers multiple image filters, mostly the usual suspects, although I found the HDR art to be appealing. It would be more interesting if I could also save a RAW version, or alternately, if I could apply this effect while in the RAW processing mode during playback. The last mode dial position is Advanced Scene Recognition Auto. A little hypey as names go. The bottom center icon identifies and displays the scene that's been selected. Except for Backlight Portrait, these are all also modes that can be set on the dial or selected in SP mode. The menu circle has two drive mode settings. Press the bottom to access low and high speed burst, 3 and 6 frames per second respectively, and then a 4K burst. And let me explain that one. The camera fires continuously and saves a 15 frame per second video file. In playback, scan through the thumbnails and save the image or images that you like. The saved files from this method are 7 megapixel JPEG images. 
A second setting here takes 4K focus stacks. Uh, clearly these four tulips can't all be in focus at once. And after taking the 4K multifocus image, which also saves a movie file, there are three options. With Select Focus, navigate to the area you want in focus, then press Q to save the image. Now, all of these capabilities require significant processing time. Using Auto, the camera creates a photostacked image using all of the focus points. And using the Range option, several focus points can be selected to create the final image. And all of these methods also create 7 megapixel JPEGs. The other drive options create exposure, ISO, film simulations, you can select which, white balance, dynamic range, and HDR brackets. Now, the HDR bracket can be set from 1 to 3 EV. After the image is taken in processing, the camera asks to confirm that you want to save it. I didn't find an option which disabled this unneeded prompt. Press the left side of the menu circle to access the self-timer modes. Now initially I was ready to whine that I didn't understand why this wasn't with the drive and bracket settings, but if you turn continuous on along with the 2 or 10 second timer, you'll get 5 images. That's a cool undocumented hack. Then it gets more interesting. Face auto shutter. Now when this mode is active, the XA5 takes a picture when it identifies a face. The yellow icon screen left indicates it's active. If you want to make sure that your subject is smiling, use the smile setting. As long as Kim kept smiling, it kept snapping. In buddy mode, there are three levels, and according to the manual, one is close enough to touch, two is shoulder to shoulder, and three is cheek to cheek. Whichever we chose, it worked best for us when I took my glasses off. The group setting works for one to four subjects, and somehow it was okay if I left my glasses on. There are two more drive-like modes, an interval timer, intervals from 1 second to 24 hours, up to 999 images, then select to just record still images or to create a time-lapse movie too. Finally, set the start time. The available formats are the same as the video settings, and there's a 4K 30 frame mode. Hmm. The multiple playback mode screens display the settings used when the image was taken. Processing capabilities include features to crop, remove red eye, and make photo books, which I didn't try. The raw processing can add a film simulation as well as adjust the exposure, white balance, color, highlight, and shadow settings. If you can get past the lack of a viewfinder, You'll find this a small yet extremely capable camera and you can let the automated features find the right settings or you can take manual control so you can create the perfect image. I leave it to you to judge whether the XA5 is the perfect camera for you. Now trivia buffs will know that the first Fujifilm X camera was the Finepix X100. It launched in March 2011. Thanks for watching. Now, if you have questions or comments, I do enjoy interacting with you. So post your relevant questions and civil comments below. And remember to keep shooting until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. Now, last thing, if you are a subscriber, thanks so much. And if you're not, please join us.